In our previous discussion, we focused on genes that are not linked. So we basically answered question A. So we saw that if we mate these two plants, one having a heterozygous genotype for two traits and the other one having a homozygous recessive genotype for two traits, and if the height gene is not linked with respect to the color trait, the color gene. So if we have non-linked genes, then we always produce a ratio that is equal to one to one to one to one. So what that means is if we mate these two individuals 1,000 times, 250 of those offspring will have one genotype, 250 will have a second genotype, 250 will have a third genotype and 250 will have a fourth genotype. That's what we mean by a one to one to one to one ratio. Now let's focus on linked genes. So in part B, if these two traits, so the high trait and the color trait were in fact linked, what will be the ratio in that case? Would it change or would it actually remain the same? So let's begin by once again recalling what it means for two genes to actually be linked with respect to one another. So let's focus on this female plant right here. In this female diploid organism, we know that every single chromosome comes with a homologous pair. So if this is the chromosome that carries, let's say, the color traits, then it's going to have a homologous chromosome that will carry another gene that will also code for that color trait. So one of these chromosomes will carry the uppercase green G, the other one will carry the lowercase recessive orange G. So let's suppose this is our lowercase recessive orange G, and the other one is the uppercase dominant green G. Now in part B we're assuming that the genes are linked. So we're assuming that the color gene is linked with respect to that height gene. And what that means is if two genes are said to be linked, then they are found on the same chromosome. And what that means is this chromosome will not only carry the gene for uppercase G, it will also carry the gene for uppercase T. So let's say on the bottom along the chromosome we'll have the uppercase T and on the bottom along the homologous chromosome we're going to carry the lowercase T. Remember only focusing on this individual here, the female individual. So in this particular case, if these two genes, if these two traits are actually linked, then all of these genes will be found along this single homologous pair of chromosomes. So we have homologous chromosome pair. And this gene here and this gene here are, are linked in the same way that this gene and this gene are also linked with respect to one another. Now, before these individuals actually mate, they have to produce gametes. They have to produce sex cells. So let's discuss what the distribution will be of this particular individual in terms of the offspring, the gametes that, <coughs> that are produced. So the gametes are produced in the process of meiosis. So we know what happens in, in um, the S phase before meiosis actually takes place. This chromosome is replicated and so is this replicated and we produce basically four individual chromatids. Now during metaphase one of meiosis, those tetramer chromosomes align along the equatorial plate. So we're basically going to have the following arrangement. So we're going to have, so this will replicate itself. And so what that means is we're going to have two identical sister chromatids that each carry identical traits. So we have an uppercase green G and uppercase green G. And then on the bottom, we're going to have an uppercase 
blue T and uppercase blue T. And likewise on this chromosome, so this one will replicate itself. And so we're going to have this purple lowercase t and purple lowercase t on the identical cystochromatid. And we're going to have so lowercase g, lowercase g. Now notice that unlike in part A, in part B, because the genes are actually linked, now when crossing over takes place, the fact that crossing over takes place and we have linked genes, we're going to produce a different distribution of this, uh, of the gamete. So in the case of part A, we saw that there are four possibilities of gametes and each one are likely, are equally likely to take place. And so we have a one to one to one to one ratio. Now we're going to have a slightly different case because crossing over takes place at random. So now in metaphase one, uh, before metaphase one actually takes place during prophase one of metaphase one. So actually let's change that to prophase because we first want to focus on the process of crossing over taking place. So crossing over takes place as we know during prophase one of meiosis. So when crossing over takes place, what basically happens is this piece of DNA here switches, exchanges with this piece of DNA. And so what we produce are the following four chromosomes. So we have one, we have two, then we have exchange taking place, uh, three, four. So nothing happens here. So this one basically remains the same. So we have uppercase T. And this one also remains the same, so we have an uppercase G. Now, this no, no crossing over takes place along the top portion of this chromosome, but along the bottom portion. So we have this one intertwines with this one, and we have an exchange taking place. And so this goes on to here, and so we have a lowercase t here. We have... Um, an uppercase T here because this one went on to this one. So we have an uppercase T and this one doesn't actually change. And the top portion of this also doesn't change. So we're going to have uh, orange here and orange here, lowercase g, lowercase g. And this one won't change as well, lowercase t. So, and then they will align along our, along our equator. So let's suppose now we're in metaphase one of meiosis. And so what happens is these two separate to opposite poles and we form two haploid cells. And then each one of those two haploid cells basically undergo uh, meiosis two. And we form four individual gametes that are haploid. So there are four possibilities of gametes that we can form. So the four possibilities are, so we can have one chromosome, a second chromosome, a third chromosome, and a fourth chromosome. So when this segregates and separates into its individual cell, we can have uppercase G and we have uppercase T for this particular case, for this chromosome here. So this is one gamete that could be formed. So because we're dealing with the female individual, we're focusing on this one, this will be our X cell number one. We could also have an X cell number two, an X cell number three, and an X cell number four. In this particular case, we have uppercase G and we have a lowercase T. In this case, we have uh, an uppercase, well, let's actually finish off. Um, we have this one here. This one doesn't change, so we have uh, a T, lowercase t, and an uppercase G. Uh, this one here is, th is this one here, so we have a lowercase g. 
and an uppercase T. So that one changes with respect to this initial starting point. Um, and so, okay, so we see that just like in part A, we have these four possibilities taking place. But in part A, we saw that the ratio was 1 to 1 to 1 to 1. In part B, because crossing over takes place at random, about 10% of our gametes produced from this individual, so about 10% will be lowercase g, uppercase t, about 10% will be uppercase g, lowercase t, and so these two types of gametes are known as the recombinant gametes because they are a result of the process of crossing over. Now, these are the same as the initial uh, parental chromosomes, and so they are non-recombinant. Now, we have about a 40% chance of these occurring and about a 40% chance of these occurring. So that means now the ratio of this to this to this to this is not 1 to 1 to 1 to 1, but it's 40, 10, 10, 40, or we can say 40, 40, 10, 10. Now, what about in this particular case? Well, because these are all recessive, we have one type of gamete that occurs for this particular male individual. So we have, because it's the male, we have um, a, let's say a sperm cell, these are the egg cells, and so we have one type of chromosome, lowercase g, lowercase t. So we have lowercase g and a lowercase t. When recombination takes place, when crossing over takes place, nothing really changes because they are identical. And so we have lowercase g, lowercase t taking place, occurring 100% of the time. So we have 100% of the time, so a likelihood of 1. In this case, we have a 0.4 likelihood, 0.1 likelihood, 0.1 likelihood, and a 0.4 likelihood. And just, let's just mention that these are the recombinant, recombinant uh, gametes. Okay, so now when this combines with this X cell, we form, so uppercase G, lowercase G, uppercase T, lowercase T. So let's put that here. We have uppercase G, lowercase G. That comes from the sperm cell right here. And then uppercase T, lowercase T. So uppercase T, lowercase T. Uh, now the likelihood of this occurring is, so one multiplied by 0.4, that gives us 0.4. So that means, let's say, out of 1,000 uh, of these individual mating processes, about 400 will be, will have this genotype right here. So the likelihood of this is 0.4, and so that implies that if we mate them 1,000 times, about 400 will have this phenotype. Now we can carry out the same exact process if we assume that this mates with this one right here. We have uppercase G, lowercase g, lowercase t, lowercase t. So we have two lowercase t's, we have an uppercase g that came from the egg cell, and a lowercase g that came from that sperm cell. This one here, the likelihood is uh, 1 multiplied by 0.1, and so that gives us about 0.1 likelihood. And in the case of what 1,000 mating processes, we have about 100 that are formed with this genotype. We could continue the process with these as well. So if this mates with this, we have lowercase g, lowercase g, um, lowercase g, lowercase g, and then we have uppercase t, lowercase and 1, a likelihood of 1, multiplied by a likelihood of 0.1 gives us 0.1, and so that implies that about 100 of the offspring produced out of the 1,000 offspring will, be, uh, will have this genotype. And finally, we have this mating with this, 
So we have lowercase g, lowercase g. So lowercase g, lowercase g, lowercase t, lowercase t. And so we form, once again, uh, if we multiply 1 multi uh, by 0.4, so we have 1 multiplied by 0.4 gives us 0 0.4. For probability and so that means out of 1,000 offspring 400 about 400 will have this genotype here so we see that in the case of part a if the two genes are actually unlinked not linked then we have a one to one to one to one ratio of these genotypes but in the case of these genes being linked the ratio changes the ratio becomes we have uh, 40 to 10 to 10 to 40 or 40 to 40 to 10 to 10 so that means out of 1,000 uh, offspring produced when we made these two individuals 1,000 times because we have the two genes being linked with respect to one another we're going to have 400 of these individuals appearing, about 400 of these, about